Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video will be part 8 of Dearest. Credit goes to the amazing author, Blaze Raptor 54, for his great story. Make sure to read the whole story by clicking the link tree link in the description, then clicking on the name of this story. This part will be chapter 29 to 32 of the story. Also, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Now let's get into this amazing story. Naruto was currently sitting in a seat in front of Karabi Killer B Akatsum. So, get this, cool cats, we got voted the second most popular mixed genre radio station studio in the Kingdom of Vale by our people. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's currently 6 in the evening and our night music is about to begin. However, before we begin our nightlife special for this booming and wet Saturday, we've got a short and sweet interview here in our station followed by a debut song. That's right, folks. I found myself a cool cat just yesterday, and he is here tonight to play his heart out. Killer B chuckles into the microphone. Anyway, ladies and gents. Naruto the Kitsune. Naruto watched as the microphone was slid over to him. Um, hi, everyone. Anyway, just like Killer B just said, I'm going to be playing my first debut song here in about five minutes. Killer B nods, five minutes, and Killer B wanted a short interview with me to get me out there. So, what did you want to ask? Well, first off, Killer B grabbed the mic. I wanted to ask you how was your day? Kind of soggy and sorry outside. So how does it hold to you tonight? Well, can't say much. I've been through some of the worst sandstorms in Vacuo, and I've been soaked to the bone in Mistral. So, it's not so bad. A little light rain never killed anyone. Naruto says into the mic, Anyway, my day's been great so far, and I can't really complain. Ah damn, hear that folks. This cat has been everywhere it seems. Anyway, this cat here is actually very young for his age. 16 soon to be 17. And once more, he's a student at Beacon. Oh yes, you heard me right. We've got a hunter that's in the making as well as a musical prodigy. Killer B says, Now, I don't know about you cats, but damn, I think it takes a lot of talent to fight with the sword, but play smooth as well. Tell me something, Naruto. Did you write the song you're about to perform? Not on paper. Almost everything I do is when I find a beat. However, I found it just outside of your studio before walking in, and well I'm ready to play. Naruto says as he takes a deep breath, oh, and shout out to all my friends and teachers at Beacon especially Ashpin, this song goes out to them. Ah, uh, hear that folks, you see this kid hasn't got a big head on his shoulders. Grounded, given back to his friends at Beacon with a dedication song. Killer B takes a deep breath as an assistant comes to get Naruto, now ladies and gentlemen, and the next minute you'll be hearing the debut of the kit soon. Killer B turned off the mic before walking over to the glass paned window, looking on as Naruto quickly got set up. Okay, kid, you ready? Yes, sir, ready as ever, Dada Bayo. Naruto yells as he holds the guitar up and strums it a few times, but to be honest, this song would work better with an electric guitar. Azula grabbed the guitar from the back. Azula, his assistant, nodded as she ran to the back and grabbed a guitar, then walked into the room, handing it to Naruto with a nod. Naruto gently put down his acoustic guitar as he hooked up the electric guitar and began to play a few notes he'd play on his acoustic. 30 seconds, Mr. Akatsum. Killer B's assistant says as she walks up and begins to mess with the controls for the sound room, and we're on standby. Naruto found his original beat, before smiling. This will be awesome, Databeo. Killer B nods, before watching as Naruto nodded and smiled. All right, kid, here we go. Yang and the rest of her team, including Weiss, were huddled around a radio. Oh shit, here we go, we're actually going to hear Naruto play for the first time. I've already heard him, Weiss says, it's actually very good talent of his. Oh well, we're now getting into personal talents. Yang teases Weiss, what did you two do? We just talked Yang, as per the bet. Weiss tells her before looking away from the blonde. I'm actually quite curious, Blake says, but that's questions for later. There will be no questions for later because we've got a combat test tomorrow, and I want to get some sleep. Weiss says, and, besides, he wasn't that bad of a person to talk to you. Weiss and Naruto sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. First comes love, then comes marriage, then he comes little Weiss in a baby carriage. Yang and Ruby teased Weiss who blushed in a fury before hitting them both on their heads. Shut up. She yells. Five, four, three, two, one. Hit it. Naruto roars as he sees the light turn green, and he began to strum his guitar very fast. He began to slow down into a beat but kept it in an upbeat tune. 
A few seconds pass by before he starts to play more slowly, but went into the upper notes. Hold on tight. Here we go. We're going to take flight into the sunlight. Naruto stops singing for a moment, ripping his guitar as strums to a beat in his head for a few seconds. Sometimes life is tough. It'll beat you down. But when you look at it a certain way, you can stand up and make it seem like a clown. I can't get no satisfaction, so let's go. Let's fly while we can. Take my hand. Give me some more of that light. Naruto yells as he began to pick up the pace on the beat. We'll take on the storms, we'll brave the wilds, and we'll storm through the night. We'll chase the sunlight down and capture it to make it ours. Come the hottest of summers and the coldest of winters, we'll have each other. Stand by me, our light will explode, and we'll fly like shooting stars. Naruto sings his heart out as he strums very fast, now hold tight, we're going to soar, with shield and sword in hand ready to cut into the night. We're not backing down. My sword and shield protect my friends as I lead them. My friends stand by me as I charge forth with my spear, and my friends stand next to me as I fade us into the shadows. I will help us go, I will help us flow, and we come around my friends stand back as I slam into the ground. Naruto sings. Naruto returned to the original opening beat for a few seconds before the start of the song, then smirked as he got closer to the mic. Hold tight, here we go, we're going to take flight into the sunlight. I know a young warrior, she runs faster than the wind, and with her skills, she'll cut away the darkness. I know her friend as well, she'll punch at the light and make it come alive in flame, she'll take flight like a dragon. One of them brings upon the power of the seasons, electric and flames flying fast at me, her ice-cold eyes staring into me with icicles coming at me, and the other I couldn't see as she takes me down. Naruto ripped on the guitar as he bopped his head more to the beat. A few seconds went by as he played his guitar, creating a musical riff in the room as he continued. Hold on tight. Here we go. We're not down yet so let's stand up. Naruto sang loudly into the mic before he started to play on higher and softer notes. I'm falling too fast. I'm afraid that the darkness is going to overtake me. I can see the red eyes staring into me, rage-filled and ready to eat me alive. It's so surreal. I can't even tell what's real. However, when I awaken, like a shining blue star, I shall explode with power unfathomed as I continue my track to be the greatest there ever was and will be. Naruto sang with his heart, I can't do it alone, my brother is by my side, and as the cinders fall, we'll join and run in a field of emerald chasing our sunlight. Once we clutch it, we'll see that inside of us is a power that is unknown and can never be controlled. With a mighty cry we'll survive. Naruto yelled before he finished the song with a few guitar notes that tapered off to silence. The light went red, and Killer B walked inside the room. How was I? Freaking awesome, kiddo, freaking awesome. I think this song is going to be a hit. Besides, if it is, I'll be giving you a call back in here. Killer B said, and here you go. Killer B handed Naruto a hundred lean, chuckling a little, consider it a down payment, ha ha ha. Naruto walked out of the studio, smiling as he pocketed the money before getting out his scroll. He saw that he had several texts, many of them from his various friends at Beacon. Was that song about us, Naruto? Because that's freaking crazy good. Was that brother you mentioned, Rexy? Hey, how come Team Coffee didn't get a shout out? Hey, Naruto, that was a really good song. I'm making it Team RWY's theme. No, that's Team JMPR's theme song. Naruto laughed a little. He did forget to put Team Coffee into the song by accident. He was about to text them when he heard something coming at him. He barely moved his head in time as a flaming black feather destroyed his scroll. Son of a bitch. I just started learning how to use that, Naruto yelled before dodging another feather. Who the hell? Naruto looked around before cursing when he saw a woman wearing a short black kimono standing on a ledge. So you're the one Dio talked about, your reflexes are very good. I was aiming to kill you with one blow, but it seems as though this will be a challenging fight. Naruto growled as blue and red aura exploded around him. He wasn't taking any chances if Dio was also nearby. All he needed to do was signal for her. His eyes suddenly widened in realization. No, my scroll. I needed to call for backup just in case this happened. The woman chuckled as she dropped down, her katana clattering a little bit. She didn't drop down like normal either, but seemed to glide slowly to the ground. She stood there as she crossed her arms. You now face the second god, the goddess of flames. Kami, what is with you and that bastard Dio having such flamboyant names? Naruto yelled, you both aren't gods. Well? After Lord Merlot gets done, we'll be stronger than even a maiden. Eh what? Oh, you don't know. Well, that's too bad. Naruto dodged a barrage of feathers, raising a wall of wood near a family they would have hit. 
Oh, so sorry. My hand slipped. I need to get her away from these people. Naruto mused as he looked around before seeing a fire hydrant. Hey, goddess of flames. Kami smirked. Good that you acknowledge my title. Meet water. Naruto made a wooden branch slam into the hydrant and fire a jet of water at her. She flew upwards, landing on a building before watching Naruto start dashing. She growled and started to follow him, gliding and dashing onto various rooftops as he jumped up and made sure to keep her focus solely on him. Inside the infirmary at Beacon, the cocoon that Rexy was in slightly cracked. A slight noise was made as it cracked some more. Inside of it a pair of yellow eyes with normal sclerae came into view. Brother. Naruto dodged several feathers as he landed on a building that was under construction. Get out of here now. Naruto yelled at some of the workers. There's a grim here. I'm a hunter. The workers wasted no time, quickly leaving the structure as Naruto saw Kami land just behind him. He turned around and barely managed to dodge a stab by her katana. However, he felt heat around it as the air ignited into flames. She smirked as he backflipped and distanced himself from her. Where's your blade at? Boy. Oh, could it be you've forgotten it? I don't need Bahabali to defeat you, which? Naruto mocked her with a smirk on his face. You're not like Dio. You're pretty straightforward in your approach. You're playing to my advantage. Heh, cocky. I like it. You're quite handsome. Too bad that little white-haired girl won't be seeing much of you. Well, maybe your leg here and arm there. She points with her sword at various parts of the room they were in. But, I wonder, was that girl Waishini by chance? You stay away from my friend. Naruto grips his fist as he enters a combat stance he saw Ash been use in their spars, or I'll smear the wall with you. Naruto's aura exploded around him, which made Kami purse her lips. She was genuinely surprised at the boy's power. I can see why Dio had trouble with you, but that's why he's off to collect someone who can teleport. Who? Naruto demands. Tell me now. Minato Namikaze. The words made his eyes widen. Oh my, got a special love for that man? Not exactly. But if you lay one finger on his children and wife, I'm not only going to rip out your heart, I'll make you suffer. Naruto's scarab became black on the outer edges of the pupil as he focused on Kami, and that's a damn promise. Show me then, Kami motioned with her hand and licked her lips. Give me something to cry and mule over, little boy. Naruto charged at her, cocking his fist back before they clashed against her blade. She smirks as they began to trade blows, neither one of them getting a hit on each other. Naruto spun around and delivered a devastating kick onto Kami that sent her through a couple of walls. She smirks, wiping her lips as she got up. She vibrated her katana before slicing at a couple of steel beams that supported the building. He ha ha ha. She laughs menacingly as she charged at Naruto. See if you can block these. Naruto was about to block them until everything in his body told him to move away. When he did, he saw to his own horror his aura being cut away. Her attack can go through aura. This isn't good. She's just toying with me. She was about to charge when Dio landed near her. He was bloodied and beaten as he coughed up a wad of blood. Friggin' Namikaze, always a pain in the ass to deal with. Dio says as looks at Kami. How are you not taking that kid apart yet? Tell me you didn't botch the capture of Minato Namikaze. Kami yells as she watches as a flash of light appeared above them. She barely blocks a man emerging from that light with a sword. Minato Namikaze. Kami yells, Merlot has a doctor's appointment open for you. You can tell whoever that is that they messed with the wrong man, in the wrong family. Minato yells as he kicks Kami away with ease and slams onto Dio. Only for Dio to get dragged back by a third member of Dio and Kami's party. Mercer, about time you come here. A man with red eyes, sharp teeth, and an extended hand dragging Dio's size as he reels his arm back in. You both are a disappointment to Merlot. You cannot even achieve victory with enhanced Grim jeans. I guess an Alpha Grim's jeans are in order, an imp. Minato flipped backwards, gaining ground as he watched Dio rip away the finger that he had marked only for a new one to grow. He landed next to Naruto, who he didn't bother to look at. Naruto growls a little bit as he steps forward and his aura exploding back to life. What did you do to his family? Naruto questions Dio. Well, I sort of hit his wife and daughter and tried to get his son. Dio chuckles, that bastard is fast, faster than my time dilation. You what? Naruto turns to Minato. Are they okay? What do you care? Minato says as he steps to Naruto's side. And you shouldn't be worried about them. They're not your family anyhow. Still the same. Naruto shakes his head and growls. Fine. Be that way. We're going to have a long talk after this is said and done. 
Minato's blue aura exploded around him as he and Naruto stared daggers into the trio of experiments that Merlot created. As a stone crumbled, Naruto and Minato charged at them. Naruto's hands blared to life as Rasengan formed in both, one red and blue. Rasengan Barash? Naruto yells as he spins around and counters Kami who moved to engage him and blasted her sword away once while she turned and countered once him when he attempted to blast her with the second one. Minato dodged around Mercer's arms, appearing in front of Dio who smirks as Mercer's arms come back around and attempt to stab Minato when bones jotted out from their hands. Minato teleported in a golden flashback to where Naruto and he were once standing. Naruto barraged Kami with kicks as he caught her off guard and kicked twice in the face with a spin kick which made her cough up some black blood as she smirked. She spun around, attempting to cut off his head, but found that he already leaned back to dodge. He's got no form. He fights with solely instinct. It's almost as if his body moves on its own. Kami muses with alarm as she reverses grips her katana and launches feathers at Minato. Naruto looks towards his estranged father, dashing backwards and forms a barrier of wood that slammed from below the floors to protect him. Skidding backwards as he stopped, Minato glared at him. Don't think I'll thank you for a moment. Didn't count on it, Naruto scuffs, prick. The cocoon Rexy was in burst open, making Glinda run in. Rexy was standing there. He had a human body now, sort of. Behind him a tail like a Beowulf swished about, he stood naked as his long jet black hair flowed down his shoulders. A blue and red aura appeared around him. He looked at his hands. In a way, he looked like Naruto, but his golden eyes and black hair as well as having an angular face made the difference present. He gripped his hands, turning towards Glinda who stood there in shock. Naruto is in danger. Naruto dashed side to side as he approached Mercer, who growled as he watched Dio and Kami take on Minato. So, you're the one that Merlot hates the most, someone who can repel him. How can you repel such a gift? Mercer yelled. Take your gift and shove it, freak. Naruto yelled as he slammed his foot onto Mercer's stomach and sent him flying off the building. Naruto spun around, barely catching Kami's blade with a wrench he picked up off the ground and spun around to bash her brains out with a violent strike when Dio appeared behind him. Time dilation. Naruto felt himself slowed down before his eyes widened in shock as Kami took her blade and stabbed him in the shoulder at normal speed. Ten seconds went by quickly and Naruto felt the blade being pulled from his shoulder. He was then kicked away by Dio. Blood slowly seeped out of the wound. He looked at Minato who had his arms crossed and looked at them. So, I guess you still don't care about me, huh, father? Naruto said as he coughed up a little bit of blood. That's fine. I don't care about you either. However, we're both going to have to work together. If... Naruto watched as Minato teleported away. We... want to... live. Naruto's face fell. What was anger turned to sadness quickly, he sighed. Yes, it has to be like this, hasn't it? Oh, that's cold, even for me. Dio said, I guess you really are a bastard child, ha ha ha. You have to have a father to be a bastard. Dio looked at Naruto who looked up at them both, and I have one, and his name's Ashbin. Naruto powered up with a roar, his red aura overtaking his blue, forcing it to hug his body. Get ready, because I'm going all out. Kami and Dio smirked as Naruto had to use one hand to block them both as they charged. Naruto flipped backwards, grabbing a piece of sheet metal to use as a makeshift sword and began to desperately try and counter Kami. Blood dripped from his good hand as the metal dug into it, which made Naruto throw the piece of metal at Dio. The blonde used his semblance to dilate time enough to where he casually stepped to the side. Naruto flipped backwards before grabbing some dust crystals out of his coat pocket. They were wind and burn crystals. The blonde smirked as they were fed with aura. The duo of Merlot's experiments looked at each other before dashing to the sides and jumped just as Naruto threw them and jumped as well. The building's floor they were on ignited in a mighty blast. This alerted many Elio in the area who began to converge. Naruto landed on a nearby building, tumbling in his roll, before breathing hard. Forming a Rasengan in his hands, he rolled to the side as Mercer appeared and launched both of his arms at Naruto. Naruto got up launching the Rasengan at Mercer who was hit full force by it. He was then sent sprawling backwards into the air before his hands from his extended arms gripped the roof. He had a demonic-like grin when he angled himself to stare at Naruto. I offer you this one time, Naruto Namikaze, join us, and I promise that Merlot will be a much better father to you than either Ashbin or Minato ever was. Naruto spat out a wad of blood before dashing backwards. Mercer slammed into the building where he had been standing. Kami appeared at Naruto's side 
where he barely dodged several slashes from her katana until one caught him and ripped a slash down his chest. Naruto roared out as Dio appeared and kicked him across the roof. Naruto got up, slamming his fist into the building as he wailed in fury as aura exploded around him. Naruto dashed with incredible speed, appearing behind Kami who had little time to react as she barely dodged a Rasengan he held, only to watch him jump and spin around before launching it at Mercer. Dio appeared in front of Mercer, using his semblance to slow the attack down and deflect it away. The blonde man smirked as he charged at Naruto. Mercer did the same. I say we take him alive, cut off his arms and legs first. Mercer nodded in agreement, only to watch as Naruto charge at them as well. Dio's eyes widened in realization, he was timing him still. His semblance couldn't be used for another 20 seconds, which meant that Naruto had plenty of time to attack them both. Dodging Mercer's arms, Naruto slammed his foot into Dio's head and sent him careening off the building with a scream. Naruto then spun around and elbowed Mercer in the stomach. The man coughed up before Naruto began to barrage him with a series of kicks. Mercer coughed up some as he was kicked away. Naruto leaned forwards and barely dodged Kami's sword before he kicked her away. Naruto's aura dispersed as he was breathing hard, coughing up some more blood. Naruto watched as all three of them got back up and smirked. All out of juice, kid? Merlot will enjoy your power. That was quite exciting. I may even make your death a pleasurable one. Naruto growled as he stood up, before powering up once more. This fox has nine tails, Naruto said, and I'm not even halfway done. Yeah. Naruto wailed as Mercer's arms came around and started to electrocute him. However, his eyes fully turned black with the red irises blazing to life as he gripped Mercer's arms before ripping them off. Wah. Mercer wailed as he retracted his now knobs, which slowly began to heal. Naruto's shoulder wounds close as black veins start to creep around his eyes before he looks at them. Naruto's fingernails slowly turn black as they grow into claws. He looks at them all with hatred in his eyes. A red aura explodes around him. Slowly a tint of blue appears on the outside. I'm not done yet. Naruto breathes as he drops into a fighting stance. I can hold out until my friends get here. But what is this power I feel inside of me? Mercer sits on the ground as Dio and Kami charge at Naruto. The blonde teen jumps backward, before blocking and countering both as fast as he could. Naruto feels Dio's time dilation and backs out of the area before he gets caught in it. Growling, Dio and Kami sidestep each other as they charge at Naruto. The teen counters them by making branches and various trees explode from under the roof they were on, knowing by now that it should have been fully evacuated. Naruto uses this moment to look around before dashing towards the ledge of a building and jumping off. Landing onto a street with Elio in it, Naruto is breathing hard as the power he had slowly started to fade. Hey, you stop. An officer says as he walks over to Naruto only for the blonde to kick him out of the way when a barrage of feathers nearly kills the officer. Naruto watches as all three of Merlot's experiments land where the officer had been. Gotcha you little bastard, Kami says as she charges at Naruto only for Minato to appear. Nanny. Minato kicks Kami backward into a glass window from a shop that got evacuated. The blonde man lands in front of Dio, who watches as a seal glows brightly on Naruto's sweater. You came back. I didn't come back out of love. I came back to finish what I started with these bastards. AKA and Anko are fine. I got them in a safe spot. Naruto looks at Minato before frowning as he got up. How did you even? Wait. When I wasn't looking, Naruto says, you put a seal on me. It was beneficial for you to live, like I said. Don't think anything more of it, Minato says as he spins his sword in his hand before handing a second one to Naruto. I need some aura. Naruto holds out his hand. Please. Generate it yourself. Minato tells Naruto coldly as he walks away from him. I need all of mine. I can't waste it on useless things. Naruto growls as he walks over to the officer. Hey buddy, can you generate aura? Yes. Naruto holds out his hand. What do you need? Give me what you can and get everyone out of here. Naruto tells him. Naruto absorbs the aura the man gave him. Before his eyes turn back to their red color and black veins appear around them. The blonde walks towards Minato who was staring down Dio as his blue flares about with an angelic hum. Standing to his side was Mercer, whose arms had fully healed. He stares daggers at Naruto. The people were quickly getting evacuated as Naruto grips his fists. Look, I don't care. Minato turns to his estranged son. Because you've never given me a reason to care. Just don't die, because I want to kick your ass myself. Minato turns away from Naruto. You're far too weak to even be considering that. Yeah whatever Minato, 
Naruto calls his father as he takes a step forward, let's do this. Naruto and Minato charge forward, both slamming their opponents with their right legs and into their chests. Naruto is the first to burst forward and kicks Mercer into a car. The man turns around, grabbing the car and throwing it at Naruto. The blonde backflips, forming a wooden wall that blocks the car. However, Mercer's two arms come through the wall, nearly impaling him. That's when Naruto rolls to the side, slicing them off once more with an aura-enhanced swipe of his hand. Sighing, Naruto jumps over the wall and forms two large Rasengan. As he is about to throw them, Naruto's eyes widen when a sword emerges from his gut. Coughing up a huge amount of blood, Naruto turns around to see Kami with a smirk on her face. She looks away and jumps away as a blonde-haired girl slams into the wooden wall that she had her back to. Naruto's breathing becomes hoarse as he collapses to his knees, before watching Mercer charge at Yang. He then throws both Rasengan as they careen and impact him. Mercer roars out as he is sent into the side of a building. Naruto collapses into a fetal position as his aura disperses and begins to solely focus on keeping him alive. Yang runs over to Naruto. Crap. Naruto. Ruby and Blake fire shots at Dio who kicks Minato away, much to the man's surprise. They're getting stronger. It must be that they take damage and convert it into extra energy via cellular regeneration. This isn't good. At this rate, me and Naruto will both get capped. Dash, Minato stops when he looks to where Naruto was collapsed. I thought you were stronger than this. Pathetic. Naruto is breathing hard as blood slowly runs from his mouth. Weiss. Ruby yells as she runs over to where Naruto was. John's team is on the way. Weiss gets over to Naruto. She and Blake pick him up. Ruby, you guys got company coming. Apparently some of those green grim are using the sewers to come at you. John's voice blares over their scrolls. Team Cerulean is on the way. Cami lands beside Mercer before chuckling as she looks at her opponents. Oh my, looks like our entire shopping list is here. Yeah, Dio says, how convenient. Lord Merlot will be pleased. Both of their eyes glowed a sickly green as black veins appeared around them. However, when they were about to charge, a red and blue object slammed in front of Naruto and the others. Brother. The object spoke as it revealed itself under the layers of aura. I've returned. Rexy. Naruto murmurs as his eyes grew dull. Is that you? You, you look normal. He he, he. Rexy turned to Naruto, giving him some aura while also healing his wounds. Rexy's golden eyes glared at Naruto as he wore his master's old Shirwani. He held Bahabali in his hands as well. Master, here is your blade. It's yours now. Naruto coughs. I'm unable to fight. I see, Rexy says with a frown. Weiss, Blake, protect my friend. Who are you? Weiss asks. I'm the Beowulf made whole, Rexy says as he unsheathes Bahabali, I am Rexy Namikaze. Weiss and everyone stared at Rexy with shock. That was the Beowulf Naruto had. They had heard he went into a cocoon-like state, but they never expected him to come out looking so much like a faunus, let alone normal. Naruto was being dragged away by Blake and Weiss. We're going to get to a hospital. Just hang in there. All right? Weiss says. Heh, sounds like you're worried about me. Naruto coughs a little bit. Sorry. It's fine. Weiss says, only for Kami to appear in front of them. Oh no you don't. You both go grab your own meat. Kami roars out, only for Rexy to appear in front of them as well? Huh. Rexy slashes at her, cutting off her arm with ease. Her eyes widen as she screams out in pain. Several creeps emerge from the ground as they charge at Rexy who blurs out of view and appears behind them with the sword in his hand and a reversed grip. The creeps all disperse as their heads fall off. Rexy stands there. Weiss, Blake, quickly now. Weiss and Blake nod, and they begin to run with Naruto. Ruby walks beside Rexy, slamming her scythe into the ground. Let's kick her butt. Rexy. Super speed duo style. Rexy shows a smirk before his eyes glow for a moment as he and Ruby charge. He had become a wisp of blue light while Ruby had turned into rose petals as they charged at their foe. Cinder, Emerald, and Team J and PR were all engaging the grim underground before John sliced the head off a green Beowulf. Let's go up. Nora nodded, slamming her hammer upwards and forming a hole. They all jumped out of it two at a time. John and Pira were the first to land and engage Mercer as he charged at a weakened Minato. John and Pira landed in front of him, with John slicing off his new arm. Rhea. Mercer screams, jumping backward to gain ground. We got you now. Wait a minute, you're not Naruto. John corrected himself upon looking at the man. Can you lot handle them? Minato asks as he looks as Cinder and Emerald jump from the hole in the ground. Oh, 
Of course, sir, Pira says, please get to safety. Pira was stunned when Minato teleported away, but he didn't teleport away until he saw Emerald and Cinder glare at him. They're servants of hers. She's nearby. Cinder walked over towards John, standing beside Pira as she pointed her arrows at Mercer. Emerald stood beside John, aiming her guns at him as well. Nora and Rin stood to their back as several Grimm emerged from the hole. Dio looked around before he caught Cami as she was sent careening back into him. She was bleeding and damaged heavily. They're too much, too many. Ruby and Rexy looked at each other, both bumping each other's fists as they walked beside Yang who was glaring daggers at Dio. Everyone looked at each other before all of Merlot's experiments backed off and walked towards each other while keeping their eyes on their opponents. All of them were breathing heavily as they each had various degrees of damage on them. You lot may have won this round, but this is just the pre-game battle. Dio says as he claps both of his hands together, we'll see each other again. Mercer and Cami flowed their aura into Dio as a glow emitted from him. Time dilation, the world. In almost an instant, everything stopped around them before Dio dashed off with his comrades. Ashpin appeared, looking around before seeing time flow back to normal. Everyone looked bewildered as they looked at each other before looking at Ashpin. Very good students. Wait, what happened to the Grim coming out of the hole? They're gone. Nora says as she and Rin look around. They retreated along with their handlers. Where's Weiss, Blake, and Naruto? Ashpin inquires. Naruto got hurt really bad. He's in the hospital. Ashpin nods at Ruby's answer. I see. Everyone, get back to Beacon immediately. Crow drops in beside Ashpin. This was bold, Ashpin. It was. Merlot must be having something planned to go after Minato Namake so openly. Ashpin says, personally, if it wasn't for the fact that if he was taken it could be disastrous later on, I would tie a bow on Minato's head. Crow noticed something and walked over to it. It was Naruto's combat boot, which had a sigil on it, a sigil he had commonly seen before. It's odd that a man who hates his own son would have a teleportation mark on their clothing. Ashpin walked over to see what Crow was talking about before observing it, sighing. I wonder how Minato managed to slip it on without Naruto noticing? Naruto was breathing fine but he was hooked to and four with blood bags as well. You're lucky, young man. You got here when you did. Otherwise, this could have been much worse. You lost a leader or two, but we'll be sure to get you back up and going. What about my stab wound? Naruto asks. Won't I need surgery? Nah, it was a clean cut. Your aura will heal you up. We're just going to keep stitches in it. The doctor says, we'll keep you overnight, however, to make sure there was no poison on the blades. It's raining. Naruto sniffs the air, outside. Oh yes, it's been a downpour since you got here, the doctor says. Tell me something, child. Do you have any relatives we need to call? No. Naruto answers as he huddles in the bed. I'm fine. Your friends will be here in a second. Also, you've got a guardian angel. Kid, someone just gave us the blood. Naruto's eyes widened at the statement. He then looked at the bags. It couldn't be, right? Naruto sighs. That's a long shot. Naruto watches as the doctor walks out before Blake and Weiss come in. You alright? Yeah, I'm better now, just shocked from the wound. Looks like I'll have another scar ha ha ha. Naruto weakly laughs. You, blonde-headed dolt, why didn't you use the scroll? Weiss yells, you could have been killed. What, me die? Pht. Naruto blows raspberries, you're not that lucky Weiss ha ha ha. I'm still going to give everyone a run for their money. Weiss sighs, rolling her eyes, just... Don't do something so stupid again. Hey, guys, I'm going to go. Son's calling me, Blake says as she walks out of the room. Naruto sighs. Weiss, make sure you watch your back from now on. Huh, Weiss looks at Naruto. One of them mentioned something about going after you. Keep that scroll near you on emergency standby. Where is your scroll? Weiss asks. Shattered, the black-haired woman destroyed it after I started texting you guys. Sorry, Naruto looks at the window before sighing. Hey Weiss, that blonde-haired man I was with, he okay? Yeah, Weiss says, he disappeared as soon as John's team arrived. Rexy is totally different as well. He looks like a faunus at best. I know. I remember it clearly before going under. Naruto looks at her. That blonde man was my father. Weiss looked stunned. Then why is he not here? Because Weiss, he sighs, he doesn't care about me. Naruto watched as Weiss reached over and took his hand. You've got people who do care about you. Naruto. Naruto, what is that growing up your arm? Naruto looked down to see a black vein slowly traveling. It's something I've had since I was four. It just appears. It's not a disease. It's a part of my semblance, I think. Oh, 
Weiss's face fell flat. That's weird. Yeah, I know, right? I'm tired. Naruto says as he leans back into the pillow. Well, I guess I could stay up here, just in case they attack again, Weiss says. It's up to you. The cafeteria should still be open, Naruto tells her. Besides, hospital food isn't so bad. Weiss nods. Do you want anything? I'll be fine. Naruto says, I'm still full from the muffins. Weiss couldn't help but chuckle as she walked out. Sighing, Naruto awoke to find that Weiss had fallen asleep in her chair. Getting up, he unplugged the four machine and stretched as he walked to the bathroom with the four machine rolling behind him. Looking in the mirror, Naruto sighed with a heavy breath as he washed his face. Just what was that power? Naruto's mind flashed back to when he was being electrocuted only for something to explode out of him. It felt like I was ten times. No one hundred times more powerful for the briefest of moments. Naruto looked at himself in the mirror. Is there really another realm of power inside of me? Something that can put me on par with Ajban at the very least? I can't get cornered like that again. They're after my friends. What if I'm the only one able to fight? Naruto scrunched his fists up. I will never ever let my friends get hurt because of me. Sighing, he dried his face, walking back into his room. Naruto saw Wai still asleep before he walked over to the bed and got a blanket. He gently draped it around her, not trying to wake her up, before he looked at the four. Naruto pressed the nurse button. Not a few minutes later, a nurse came in. Yes. Can you unhook me, please? I need some fresh air, Naruto says as he crosses his arms. I'm sure that's fine here. Naruto hisses a little bit when the nurse pulls the needle from his arm. You're actually getting discharged in a few hours anyhow. Feel free to walk about and get some air. Should I wake her up? She's been up most of the night, I think. Leave her be. I'll get us out of here before she becomes a bother. Ha ha ha. You two a couple? Huh. No no no. She's a really good friend. Heh. Well, she's a cutie. Um, thanks, I guess. Naruto watches as the nurse walks out of the room. Sighing, he takes a deep breath before walking towards the door. However, that's when it opens, revealing Ashpin. Naruto quickly backs away as the man enters, before he smiles. Naruto, good to see you're up and about, Ashpin says. However, you should be resting. I'm sorry, just really anxious to get back to training, Naruto says. I've got friends that are in danger if I don't. You've been quite the active little fellow, which is why I came to tell you something, Ashpin says as he walks over towards Weiss. Is she resting? Yeah, she's been up most of the night probably. She was scared that they'd come back. That's not an unfounded fear. It's best to always strike back when your enemy least suspects it. Yeah. Anyway, Ashpin motions for Naruto to sit on the bed. I've come to tell you that Minato Namikaze is here. Naruto scoffs. And you want me to talk to him? No. I don't expect you to. Well, not because of him. However, Minato did something right by you for once. He told Anko of you. Naruto's eyes widen, and she's wanting to meet her stepson. Naruto's eyes widen a little bit. She'd, she's wanting me, to be, a part? Ashpin sits by Naruto. He sighs, she is. So, what does Minato think of it? He doesn't like it. I'm afraid that man will never know love for you. Can I at least talk to him? Know why? You can, but Naruto, sometimes it's better to let sleeping dogs lie. I know. Thanks, dad. Ashpin smiles before hugging Naruto with his free arm. It's no problem, son. Naruto nods. Can we meet in a separate room? I can arrange that. Wouldn't want Miss Shni to wake up and be cranky, would we? Ashpin jokingly questions Naruto. The blonde laughs a little before getting up and following Ashpin. I want him at least talk to Minato first. Naruto was in a private room. The bed had been moved out, and in its place were chairs. Sighing, he looked at the door. Ashpin was standing outside of the room, smiling a little bit when Anko and her children walked out of the elevator, glaring at Minato. Anko and the kids stood off to the side as Minato walked towards the door. Ashpin held out his cane to the door before looking right at Minato. I look at your family. I see happy children. So I won't flatten you out here. Ashpin says straight to Minato's face. Because trust me when I say this for all the hell you've put your firstborn child for you don't even deserve this. Anko looked at Minato with anger but sadness in her eyes. She turned away from her husband when he looked over at her. You don't deserve to walk into there and talk to him. You don't even deserve to speak a word to him. So you should be thankful he's letting you explain why you hate him so much. Ashpin hisses and moves his face until he was inches away from the taller man. Because in all respect if these people weren't here, I'd tie a pretty little bow on your head and give you to Merlot myself. Minato looks right at Ashpin. You already know who's his mother. 
don't you? I don't hate. In fact, I think I love him for it. It's not about someone's birth. It's about what they do with the life they've chosen. That is for another talk, for another time. However, if you tell Naruto this, then I'll gladly at least let him see his mother for once. Ashpin growls at Minato. Minato scoffs at Ashpin as he walks past the man and enters the room. Sir, Anko calls out. I didn't even know about Naruto being his son. I met him once. I mean, they look the same, but it's not your fault, Mrs. Namikaze. But I'm glad that you at least will allow Naruto time to see his family. Ashpin smiles, and thank you. He's lived a lonely life. Wait, so Mr. Kitsune is my big brother? AKA says, that's super cool, I have a hunter for a brother. Mama, Minma called out, is it true big brother is a hunter? Yes, Ashpin tells them, and he's going to be the best one of them all. Both children beamed with bright smiles before they tried to walk over to the door. However, Anko held them back. Not yet guys. Both children complained before sighing, okay, mom slash mama. Ashpin watched as Winter came walking up from an elevator. She had been looking for Weiss to make sure she was okay. I hope you soundproof that door with those seals of yours. Five layers. Ashpin pushes up his glasses. They'll need it. Naruto sits across from Minato, looking at him, while Minato does the same. Both staring at each other before finally. Naruto speaks up. So, what made you tell them? I felt that at least since you kept me from getting ganged up, you deserve to have a chance with other people. People that are unfortunately related to you through me, Minato tells Naruto. Honestly, Naruto, if I could go back and undo you, I would. Naruto's eyes widen before he feels a sudden rush of anger hit him. Screw you. Naruto gets up and throws a chair at the man. Minato barely dodges out of the way only to get socked in the mouth. He is so caught by the attack he doesn't even react when Naruto kicks him in the stomach tears bristling at Naruto's eyes. Do you even know how many nights I suffered alone in the cold? All the times I wished you'd just come home. Naruto screams as he punches Minato again, and this time, breaks the man's nose. I don't want anything to do with you. I want to make sure you know how I felt. How it felt to be alone. How it felt to be an outcast. How it felt to be forgotten. Naruto screams as loud as he could in Minato's face. I hate you. I hate you. I hate your face. I hate your friggin' eyes. I hate the fact you're my father. Do you have any idea how hard it was to go about, every time saving a child and having their parents run to comfort them? Do you even realize how messed up I was? Naruto screams. I still get scared when people get mad. I still have confidence issues. I still have the innate fear that everyone will just pack up and leave me. Minato looks at Naruto, seeing the red eyes of his estranged son glaring daggers into him. If looks could kill, Minato would have been dead as soon as he walked into the door. This was just him being sent to hell. Naruto. Don't, Naruto me. Don't even speak my name. You never deserve to say my name again. Naruto screams. I still love you. Minato's eyes widen as he looks at him with shock. Excuse me? Yeah, I still love you, and that's what's hurting the most. Because, somewhere, in all the shattered pieces, the child in me wants you to acknowledge me, wants you to love me, but the reality is that you never will. Because, I remember this. Naruto reaches into his pants pocket and pulls out a photo of when he was a baby. Tears fall from his eyes. I remember the last time you said, I love you, son. And I remember the first time you said you hated me. Minato looks away from the photo, only for Naruto to grip the collar of his shirt and scream, Look at it, you bastard. Naruto shakes as Minato stares at the picture before he feels Naruto let go of him. Naruto stuffs the photo back into his pocket and grips his hair. Tears fall down his face as he sobs. Can you at least tell me what happened to my mother? Minato remains silent only for Naruto to stare at him before he feels rage seep into his heart once more. Why have you forsaken me? In your eyes, your heart, your thoughts. The young blonde growls as he looks at the older. I don't care if you hate me. I don't care if you feel you're justified in some messed up way for the way you treated me. Just give me closure. Minato looks down before sighing. I guess it's time you learned the reason why I have forsaken you. It seems I owe you that much. You at least. Naruto questions as he grips his hands, that's all. Naruto, I heard of a boy running around able to control Grimm. Was that you? Yeah, what of it? You probably forgot because I poisoned you a long time ago. Those powers were always yours, because of your mother. Naruto turns around, his eyes widened. What? From the beginning, Minato says as he takes a seat and wipes the blood off his face. I'll start from the beginning. When I was a younger man, I was a part of the noble court, I was one of the best hunters inside of Vacuo. I was known as the Golden Flash, and it was because of my semblance, 
and also known as the Reaper due to my ability to just kill within a split second. Minato tells Naruto as the younger blonde looked at him. The teen takes a seat. Go on. Anyway, me and your mother. Well, after we fell in love, we soon fell into bed with one another. I naturally kept her a secret, however. I couldn't when one day I came to her home, our secret home. Naruto's eyes widened as he remembered a house in one of the few wooded areas in Vacuo. And she told me she was carrying you. I attempted to get Baladeva to legitimize you and her, but the family would have none of it. They excommunicated me and sent me wayward with a pregnant woman carrying my child. Minato shudders a little bit, and at the time Sakushina. No, you were about to say a different name. Say the damn name. Don't hide anymore from me. Naruto suddenly catches Minato. Salem, not Kushina. Kushina was your mother's fake name. Naruto's eyes widened. Well, it came time for her to give birth to you. It was, and always will be, Naruto, the single, most, happiest, and painful moment of my life. Naruto's eyes widened as tears spilled from them again. I loved you. I loved your mother. However, one day, you went out into the woods. I let my guard down, and a death stalker had gotten the drop on us. Your mother was at home cooking at the time. Minato looks at Naruto. And you saved me, and yourself at a cost. Cost? Naruto asked. What? Everything I knew. Minato looked at Naruto in the eye. Naruto, you're not full faunus, nor are you even half human. Naruto got up. What? Naruto, please listen to me. Minato watched as Naruto sat back down. Because of you, I lived, but I wished I hadn't. Your aura activated for the first time, and unlike what I saw, it wasn't blue and red. It was a dark crimson red with a black outline, with a ghostly hum instead of an angelic one like my own. Your hair was snow white, your skin deathly pale. It was like, no, I was looking at a demon. Naruto's eyes widened at Minato's proclamation. Your mother, Naruto, Salem, she's the queen of many grim, not all of them, but many. Minato told him, I'm a demon? Naruto looked at his hands. Is that why I'm so powerful? I don't know. Naruto looked at his estranged father. I can't honestly say for sure now. I was always afraid you'd grow to hate humanity at some point. But I was wrong. I overreacted and still did. Minato shook a little as suddenly his feelings came into light. I confronted your mother, and my duty as a huntsman took hold. It was a simple choice. Minato looked right into Naruto's eyes. Kill you both, or walk away from you both. Naruto looked at Minato with horror etched on his face. He shook as he gripped his fists. I forced your mother to take poison that would make her go to sleep, so that I could take you away from her. But on the way, somewhere in life, I picked up the bottle and just drank, and drank, and drank. I then gave you the same poison to seal away these memories, to seal away the bad ones, but I just caused you to have the worst ones, because in a way, if you grew to hate humanity, I wanted you to find me and take it all out on me. Minato told Naruto. Because then I did my duty. Minato sighs. I'm proud of the young man you've become, but I know what you really are deep inside, and it scares me. Naruto looked at Minato, sighing. So what? You should have forsaken your duties. Doesn't family take hold? Does the bird simply refuse to fly when it is caught in a storm? Minato tells Naruto. Does the caterpillar refuse to transform and go against nature? Naruto looked at Minato, before looking down at the floor. So, what does that mean? It means, Naruto, that I will never, ever, love you because I can't on the off chance you turn against the world. But it should never be the duty of the father to put down their son. Minato gets up. But if it makes it any better, I think you have a right to see your brother and sister. Naruto socked Minato in the mouth once more. The man turns to him and expected a retaliation this time. Keep going. Naruto didn't hesitate as he punched Minato again, and again, and again. Minato watched, feeling the punches slowly stop. Wash away your hatred, Minato tells him. Because deep inside of you, there lurks a monster that will stop at nothing to use it against you, and that monster is called darkness. Naruto bawled as he hit Minato in the stomach before stopping and allowing the man to get up. Minato's aura had already healed most of the damage. He had let it down to give Naruto satisfaction, and it hurt like hell. Sighing, Naruto stands up straight, taking a deep breath. His red eyes disappeared. What do you mean by inside of me, darkness? Inside of us all, Naruto, there are two beings, light and darkness. The need to create, the need to destroy, but you choose which one takes persistence. Minato tells Naruto, I chose my darkness years ago to harden my heart against you, and I tried, Naruto, to find a reason to let go of my duties. However, 
Minato looks at his firstborn child. If you must know, why even try to keep hating me? You've had a hard life, but I saw friends of yours, many of them ready to fight to the death for you. Naruto looked at Minato stunned at the man's words. And that is the mark of a hero. Minato begins to walk out of the room. Minato. Naruto watches as he turns to him. Thank you. Like I said, it was the least I owed you. Minato opened the door, and Naruto heard some gasping as he watched Minato wave off everyone. The door was shut, giving Naruto time to take the hint and rearrange the room. However, he stopped before he looked at himself in the mirror. Slowly, but surely, the appearance of a child version of him having pale skin and white hair emerged. Looking at himself, Naruto sighs. Just another series of bad events. The door slowly opened, and Naruto looked to see Anko with his brother and sister. They slowly walked towards him before both had bright smiles on their faces. However, Naruto turns around before kneeling and clutching AKA and Minma in his arms. Both of them were laughing, giggling, and just happy to know that they had an older brother. Naruto himself allowed a smile to appear on his face as he felt something warm in his chest. In this tragic life, I know what I hold dearest. Naruto rubs Mima's golden and purple locks, chuckling all the while. AKA was complaining when Naruto gave her a noogie, but later did the same to him. Time seemed to pass rather quickly as the three engaged in various activities with one another until Minma had gotten tired and fell asleep. I hold my friends, John, Cinder, Emerald, Rexy, Pira, Weiss, Ruby, Blake, Rin, and Nora, even Yesu, Yang. Naruto watched as Anko gently laid Minma on one of the chairs, walking over to him, before clutching his face in one of her hands gently. Your father's eyes, your father's markings, but I really wish to meet your mother. She must have a beautiful face. Anko smiles. Thank you for protecting him. Even if you both hate each other, I still want to call you my son. Naruto had tears spill from his eyes as he wrapped her up in a hug. However, I will also hold those that come into my life all the same. This life of mine is precious. Drenched in suffering, I can always ignite the flame inside of it to make a new light. Naruto stood up on top of the hospital as he watched Minato and his family walk off. Naruto was joined by Ajbin who patted the boy's shoulder. I'm proud of you. Have you gotten the closure you wanted? Yes. Naruto says, and it feels as though a burden has been lifted off my shoulders. I see. I guess that leaves just the elephant to address. Ashbin looked at Naruto. Do you want to see your mother? You know where she is? Ashbin nods before looking over at a white fox that was on top of a hospital. It had a fresh bandage on its leg. You know who she is, don't you? I know, but it's up to her if she's ready to let go of her hatred for humanity. Naruto sighs before smiling. If she hasn't gotten over it, then I'll make sure she sees the light like I have. After all, it's darkest before dawn, right? I will hold you all sacred, even if I fall into the darkness. I know you all will pull me out one way or another. It's a tough burden to bear. That is correct, Naruto. Ashpin chuckles. Looks like you've been listening to me after all. Naruto chuckles before watching as several birds flew into the air, free from the storm. As he closed his eyes, he imagined himself as one of the birds. Finally, having closure, he could fly away from the ground. He could fly as high as he wanted, without care and even if darkness was creeping in slowly, he always had one thing. His many friends, Team Cerulean, Juniper, Ruby, and Dr. Oblek appeared in his mind. His loved ones, Ashpin, aka, Minma, and Anko appeared in his mind, all of them smiling. They were all, totally without doubt, his son. Naruto and company slowly walked in the forest. So Naruto, it's time to test it out. Eh? Yeah, Naruto tells Cinder, I need you to bring it down so I can get a good opportunity. Placement is everything. The quicker I can subdue it, the better, and it involves me either placing the initial bit inside of its brain, or heart. The energy, or the soul? Emerald questions, poetic. Ain't it? Yeah, I know, but we've got to at least try it. Why an evermore? Why not an evermore? Touché. Rexy traveled besides Naruto. These clothes are itchy. You'll get used to them, buddy. Naruto smiles as Bahabali jingles on Rexy's side. Naruto had decided to give Bahabali to Rexy temporarily until Ruby could either make Rexy a weapon, or Naruto would have to go get one. Naruto's new strategy between the two was now high speed, which involved both he and Rexy going in as fast and as quickly as possible. Naruto looked at Rexy before smiling. I heard you kick their butts. Me and the silver I'd one beat the woman to a pulp. It was rather easy. Naruto chuckled at Rexy's answer. 
That's good. That's very good. You are always strong, Rexy. Naruto cheerfully said. Isn't that right, Cinder? I believe so, Cinder said. Besides, we should be nearing our target soon. The Nevermore pair were after are rather large. I know. That's what I want to see. If my powers are limited to the size of Grimm, or if they're just universal. Besides, if I am really the son of this, Salem person, a supposed queen, then it's my birthright to control and tame Grimm, correct? Naruto questioned Cinder. He's not too far off, Emerald said. Besides, I was a little shocked at the information. But luckily, his blabbering mouth kept it between us and Ashpin. Hey. Oh, come on Naruto, songbirds squawk a lot. I don't. Do too. Do not. Do too. Emerald and Naruto glared at each other before a loud screech broke their glare. Damn, that was loud. Oh, what's the matter, M? Chicken? Naruto motioned his arms as if they were wings, bok bok bigook. Oh, eat me. Emerald rolled her eyes. Besides, my chain may be a little bit weaker than normal. Then I'm going down its gullet with greens. Naruto said as he smiled before watching a shadow move in the sky. Oh, and look, it spotted us. Naruto watched as smaller shadows appeared. Stomping his foot on the ground, a dome of wood formed around his team as the sharp knife-like feathers impacted the wooden dome. As the feathers stopped, Naruto smirked as his eyes lit up the dome with their small dim red glow. And, Naruto made the dome splinter, were golden. Rexy's eyes glowed with the golden flare as he ran, jumping over Naruto as he sprinted towards a tree in the form of a blue wisp. Naruto smirked as he turned around and formed two Rasengan, looking on as the giant Nevermore started to yaw and turn towards them. Naruto glanced at the giant demon bird. It was at least the size of a log house, maybe at most a larger trailer. Nowhere near as big as the one they had the displeasure of encountering in the Emerald Forest a few months back. It was, however, big enough to pose a threat. It was flying lower and lower, screeching loudly as it saw Naruto. The blonde smirked as he threw the two Rasengan in his hand before watching them barely miss the Nevermore. The Grim had its talons ready to snatch Naruto up, delivering death. Only then did it feel the stinging pain as Rexy jumped out of a tree and stabbed it with Bahabuli. It hissed, screeching as it started listing to the side in its flight path, falling from heaven, only to meet Earth. Naruto sighed, black veins appearing over his eyes as he and the rest of the company ran towards the Nevermore. Cinder jumped first, firing dust arrows in a volley that pinned the Nevermore to the ground, with Emerald jumping close behind her. Emerald, she ordered, now. Emerald slung the blades of her Kuzurigama as she threw them over the Nevermore and went behind a tree where Rexy appeared and helped her hold the chain as they sank into two nearby trees. They created a bond over the giant Grim, holding it down as Cinder focused on her arrows to keep them formed. Naruto, whatever you're going to do, please be quick about it. Cinder hissed as her aura started running fast through her and her various arrows. The blonde nodded, jumping onto the Nevermore before having all his aura focused into his right palm. Every bit of it. Naruto focused on this formation of aura, depositing some of his life feelings into it as well. All right, let's do this. Naruto screamed as he thrust his palm onto the Nevermore. Blue lines formed over Naruto's hand as he hissed. It felt like his hand was burning as red aura was pushed out, and blue aura started to sink into the bird. This was a hunt mission, so if he killed the Nevermore, it was still a win. He was hoping it wouldn't be that result, however. Black veins appeared on Naruto's arms slowly traveling down to his palm. His eyes shined with their crimson flare out, his scare slowly turning black. Practice on bringing this power out had been worthwhile. It was the next step towards being competitive towards Ajpin. The last time they had sparred, Naruto made him get a little serious, and he stunned the man by breaking one of his barriers. One of many to come. However, this one barrier, the doubt within himself that he could do something he only did once with Rexy, remained. What he was prepared to do now, for all the reasons, the main one was to break through this barrier of self-doubt. Thunder, that's what he heard, and by the sudden stunned looks of Emerald and Cinder, they heard it as well as his aura sank into the Nevermore. He felt himself go lightheaded. He felt like he was going to puke, but he pushed onwards. Falling to his knees on the Nevermore's chest as it thrashed about, Naruto held his glowing palm with his free hand before glaring hard as the black veins made their way into his palm. He felt as though something was leaving him before watching as slowly, and surely, blue lines pushed their way into the Nevermore. Roaring out, Naruto forced his aura through sheer willpower to move inside the creature, reaching its heart, its dark and empty soul. Slowly, however, Naruto could see, inside of the Nevermore's heart, 
A blue flame erupts through his red eyes as it sees Naruto smiling brightly before its thrashing stops slowly. Everyone was in bated breath. Rexy had Bahabuli in his grip just in case the Nevermore was enacting a sort of ploy to throw Naruto off guard. However, when the bird's red eyes slowly turned blue, they knew it then. Naruto had done it. Naruto stood up, breathing heavily, before falling backward as Rexy came and caught him. Naruto was fast asleep as Rexy looked at the Nevermore. The giant Grim looked back at him before Cinder let the arrows disappear. Slowly, the Nevermore shook, and as Emerald removed the chains over it, it mewled as it rolled, and its beak rested against Naruto. Rexy, with bated breath once more, allowed Naruto to lay on the ground as the Nevermore merely laid next to him. Almost resting, but in Rexy's eyes he saw it, Naruto's heart was pulsing with blue energy as it formed a sort of line connected to the Nevermore. Pulses of energy were exchanged between the two before Rexy took a deep breath. Naruto is giving it a soul. Rexy's golden eyes dimmed their glow as he looked at his teammates. Brother has done well. Well, we should still stay close, just in case something goes awry, Cinder says as she goes to take a seat near Naruto only for the Nevermore to hiss and squawk at her. Cinder eyed the Nevermore before sighing, fine, you oversized pigeon. I'll sit by a tree. Rexy walked near the Nevermore, standing near it before gently taking his hand and rubbing its beak. You know that Master is inside of me as well, you can sense it, no? Maybe this could be your future as well. Rexy slowly sat next to the Nevermore, laying against its wing. We still have one to capture or kill, but I doubt Brother would be able to perform this feat twice in a row. Okay, well, I guess we could set up camp, Cinder says as she looks around. Besides, other Grim not being here means there is no Horde presence. Doesn't mean there isn't a small pack of Beowulfs and an Alpha, Emerald points out. Beowulfs never ever travel alone. Thunder roared near the mountains, sighing. Rexy walked over towards everyone. Unfortunately, it looks like Naruto will asleep for a few more hours. That's not a good thing, considering. A fall squall is blowing in. Cinder sighs before looking at Naruto. Wait, what's going on? She watched as several small branches seemingly connected Naruto to the Nevermore. Flowers of various colors resembling lotuses blooming off the branches before she could clearly see pulses of red and blue aura bouncing between them. This is some avatar shit. Emerald curses as she walks over towards the Nevermore. Friend, foe. All of them looked at the Nevermore as it talked. Friend, foe. Friend, I guess. Wait, how are you talking? Emerald questions, Master. The Nevermore looked down at Naruto. Soul, sing song of happy. The Nevermore tried to speak but failed to form the words. Rexy walked over to it, placing his palm on its head before smiling. Closing his eyes, Rexy sent Aura into the bird as well forming a sort of network, before his eyes opened with the golden irises glowing brightly. Nevermore says that Naruto sings songs from his soul, sings of us, and that we are friends. The branches surrounding us are a network of life, nature, giving soul to the soulless, Rexy says, this is the same process. It says, that I must have went under before becoming what I was. So, it's like a natural neural link? Cinder asks, right? I'm not for sure. Rexy says as he removes his palm, he says Naruto's energy is mixed, that he's of them, Ayakashi, the ancient ones. Emerald and Cinder looked at each other, before nodding. Rexy, do you trust us? I do. Rexy looked at them. Why ask me such a question? No reason, Emerald says, but it's good to know that you trust us. Cinder and Emerald turned around, kneeling on one knee and holding their fists to the ground. Rexy watched as a woman with white hair, black scara, and red irises slowly moved from behind a tree. The former Beowulf felt intense energy coming from her. He felt compelled to do what he did next. He too, took a knee, slamming his fist into the ground. It wasn't that he wanted to, but her mere presence, was compelling enough. Cinder. Emerald. My ever so loyal disciples, Salem speaks with a smile. I see that my son is reawakening his ability to control Grimm. She walks past them. You've summoned me. Is this truly the only time I get to see my child, while he's laying asleep upon a forest floor? Rexy got up. Salem looked at him before smirking. Ah, the Beowulf that became something less, but so much more. Your master's mother, the lady in white. Rexy says, I can sense your energy. Ours is similar. Salem chuckles as she walks over to the Nevermore. You've gained a new sister. Salem lovingly brushed the Nevermore's face, then looked down at the thin branches connecting her son and it together. A very basic form of soul connection, our power as Ayakashi. Direct connection, direct giving. 
direct taking if one desired. Rexy eyed Salem as she knelt down. Tell me, Cinder, why haven't you begun to move my son onto shelter? Why haven't you, Emerald? Is it that you are afraid of your new companion? Is she intimidating? Cinder and Emerald both winced at the question before Emerald spoke up. No, Emerald told Salem. We're just pondering our next movement and our trust in Rexy. Oh, yes, he never knew about you being my disciples. Salem turned to Rexy. Tell me, does that Shirwani you bear upon you? Does it now feel warm? It does. Rexy said, why? You were cloaked in the trust of my son, a trust that is a sacred thing. And when the time comes for him to choose to cross over or remain, will you be there to walk those paths with him? Salem asked him, are you to be trusted in keeping my disciples a secret yet undiscovered? If I don't, I assume that you will break me, Rexy answered her. But my master is not to be harmed by anyone, not even his mother. I would never dare harm my child, Salem said, kneeling and rubbing his face. He has an important destiny to fulfill. Salem caressed her child's cheek. We shall move to shelter. Katapa. Rexy's eyes widened as a giant Beowulf leapt from heavy tree cover, landing in front of them. It was the size of a small house and was forced to walk on all fours. Its bony armor covered most of its body. Emerald and Cinder walked over to it. Lady Salem slash Uzumaki. Where shall we go? Emerald and Cinder asked at the same time. You are needed with Katapa to hunt the last Nevermore here. This Nevermore here. She shall remain here until morning where she will meet you. Katapa has my scent. He shall track me to a nearby cave where you all will take shelter for the night. Rexy got up. I guess I'm following you then. Mistress. I guess you. Salem chuckled as she picked up her son. I haven't held him this long since he was a toddler. Databane. Ruby, Young, Weiss, and Blake were getting ready for bed. The white-haired girl sighed as she looked at her scroll. They're supposed to be done with their mission by now still. Oi. Weiss heads up. Young shouted. Weiss barely dodged a letter being thrown at her. Young, will you please stop doing that? I can't help it. Baytube has these little bit of videos featuring a guy called First Sergeant, and he does mail call in comedic ways. So, yeah, but look, you got it impaled in the wall. Weiss waved her arms at the letter. It was indeed stuck into the wall, which made Young sheepishly rub the back of her head. Sorry, whatever besides. I was just thinking of something. Oh, do tell. Is this about that guy Neptune? No. Oh, it is a boy, or otherwise you'd say it was nothing. Weiss rolled her eyes, can we not? Oh, we must, we must. After all, Blake's little bedsheet incident only conspires conspiracy amongst us. Who do we bring into our dorm when the rest aren't here? Blake glared at Yong as she lowered her head to face the blonde. You damn well know me and son aren't that close yet. I'm not some hussy. Blake told Yang, unlike a certain someone who spies on boys going to the outdoor shower. Hey, I'm not a hussy. Yang crossed her arms. I just have a healthy libido. Yang, what's a libido? Ruby asked. Something you'll learn once you're 16. Yang told her sister as she watched her go back to bed. Besides, lovey duffy or going to the petting zoo is not exactly unnatural. It's always good to scratch a monkey's back once in a while. Weiss blushed heavily before turning away from everyone. How shameless are you, Yang? Very, Yang said. I mean, come on. I have confidence and I know who I am and what I want. Mama sees, Mama wants, Mama gets. Blake rolled her eyes. Well, Mama needs to stop texting late at night. Who is the mystery boy anyway? Oh no, 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 no. You don't get to try and shame me and ask me who I talk to. Yang wiggled her finger with a teasing smile. Besides with the vital tournament in a month, we all need to be at our best, stress relieved and all. So, it's just random? Meh, not really, casual at best. Weiss sighed, looking at her scroll. She bit her lip as she opened the messenger before clicking on Naruto's picture. Is everything going okay on your mission? Sighing, she waited, before a minute passed and no response. Checking the aura checkers, she found that Naruto's aura was slightly lower than the others on his team, but that was usually normal. Naruto was always the first one in and the last one out in a fight. I think Weiss has a crush on Naruto. Weiss suddenly heard Blake talking to Yang. She turned around and glared at the cat girl. Excuse me. She yells. How would you even know that? Oh my god. Yang squeals. You do. You didn't outright deny it. Okay. Fine. So what? So what? You're a shnee with a crush on a faunus. So, what's your point? Well, if family honor is everything to you guys, why are you trying to talk to Naruto? Was I that obvious? Blake and Yang nodded. 
You sit next to him in class now. You text him. You check up on him. You even stayed at the hospital with him after I left. After I told you that Ashpin was there. Do you think? He knows? Wise questions. I mean, he still thinks I like Neptune, and it was never anything of the sort. Well, Weiss, maybe you shouldn't act like a hardass all the time, Yang points out. I mean, seriously, and admit it. You give people a hard time sometimes. Weiss glares at Yang, and sometimes people need to be pushed to do things that they thought they could do. It's how Winter taught me. Well, that's combat. Weiss, love is something that can't be taught, Blake points out. It's something you must learn on your own, feel on your own. You can't be told who you can love and who you cannot. Well, unless you love your family more than just, you know. Okay, that's super gross, Yang says as she rolls her eyes. Point is, girl, let's be honest. You may know what we mean, but you don't feel us. Okay, well, I never had the need. Bullcrap. I'm telling the truth. Everyone has the need. It's an itch, an itch that you've got to scratch occasionally. Sighing and blushing, Weiss turns her head. He thinks I just want to be friends. That's my fault. Well, you could just go for broke and kiss him. Are you out of your mind? What? Just walk up to him tomorrow and grab him. Bam. I will do no such thing. Besides, there's my father and brother to worry about. And I could lose my status as an heiress, and in my brother's hands, our family company would fall faster than an armor gig is off a cliff. Hmm. Well, she's got a point. Whitley is very unstable. Even for such a young age, Blake says as she flips her books, reading a couple of lines, it's rather sad. Really? Blake, how would you eve? Oh, yeah. White Fang. Weiss remembers. Well, what do you think I should do? Personally, Blake says, I would test waters first. While Yang may have a point at being blunt because, well, Naruto isn't exactly savvy in the arts of socializing and romancing. Could have fooled me. All the things he told Weiss were textbook flirting. Oh, yeah. Yang, excuse me. Weiss yells, how would you even know? We sort of got on a separate bulwark and spied on you, and I've been lying here awake listening to you all argue. Ruby blurts out like a machine gun without stopping, only to stop and take a breath. Naruto's an awesome person. So, whose idea was it to spy on Naruto and me? Weiss asks Ruby while glaring at her. Johns. Weiss looks at her, before nodding. Go figure. Okay, enough. We've got a test tomorrow. I want some sleep. Weiss turns off her light and rolls over to face the wall before checking her scroll. There was still no reply. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content. Click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.